Great. It was just perfect setup, and, and honestly, for enemy, if I'm if I'm enemy, I'm looking at banning away soul because right now, that's really what's making the hunter's mid so potent because they can put soul over in that dual lane, and we actually saw Fnatic run a very similar composition against enemy as well, but enemy played a very passive game. They only allowed uh, Fnatic to get about 4k ahead, and then they held out until late game. Well, this is the thing. They they banned Freya going into this because I assume they felt like the Freya was the more dangerous pick out of Freya and Sol that enabled the, uh, the Neath middle. So can they actually ban both? Because then we see the dangerous situation of Jingxian, Bologna, or Kepri making it through. And if if uh, enemy end up going for the first pick, as we probably expect, then you know they're going to let two go to Epsilon if they try to do that strategy. But, but and that is too. bad for them. Epsilon could also just not ban top tier gods and just target out players. And then they immediately get two top tier picks. Yeah, I mean, that's completely true. They could do that. There's so many, right now, you know, the ball is in Epsilon's court. They have so many options that they can run with. And it's really for enemy to try to figure out, you know, what, you know, they have a, just a couple moments to try to figure out, all right, we need a new game plan because obviously ours didn't work. We had the NA versus EU, you know, perfect draft picks, as Adriactia said. We looked at the NA comp, we're like, that's brilliant. He looked at the EU comp, he's like, no, that's brilliant. So we have those completely competing ideals. And so obviously one of them was better than the others. And so we need to see them try to transition a little bit, either get rid of the Ymir, get rid of something that, you know, really makes those EU comps work, or transition towards it themselves. So only one way to find out how this is all going to shape up, folks. And that is in the picks and bans for game number two. Will enemy answer back and put one on the board, or will Epsilon just make sure that they're one step closer from being the Smite World Champions? Let's go into the picks and bans. All right, folks, here we go. Epsilon Esports, enemy. Epsilon on the red, enemy in the blue. Let's see what we have coming up first. Incon, what do you think? Uh, first note here, of course, is enemy is that first pick because they lost. That means they do get to pick up the side that they want. So they have dra they have opted for that first pick side, which, you know, the order side has definitely the higher win percentage this tournament. For whatever reason, it usually probably because you get the either the blown or the shink head pick out. This is usually Didn't uh, C9 Epsilon, didn't uh, order side win every game? Yeah, I believe so. So, I, I mean, enemy also against Paradigm uh, won every order side game. We know enemy prefers order side, so I, like I said, that first game, the fact that they didn't get order could be important. They are sticking to their guns. Enemy, every time they are on first pick, have banned out this Qingxian as the first thing. And I think that's to force the issue that, you know, Epsilon need to ban Bologna, otherwise they're going to get Bologna. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. At that point, you know, Bologna becomes the majority pick where you go, oh, that is the big highlight. Uh, God that we'll be looking at so but but it gives them a totally free ban They don't have to worry about banning it because they always have the option to first pick it So it does put the pressure over towards Epsilon. We've also always seen Europe Fine with giving away Bologna in that first pick spot if they get the Sobek for the solo lane matchup I don't think it's had too much success so far But that's something we could look to because we know Demi, you know, he, he played he could play a Sobek Yeah, I mean Sobek a great pick to counter the Bologna, but the problem is will Sobek bring the same presence in a team fight that the Bologna does. And I know Adaraxia loves the Sobek for the late game. Yeah, I think Sobek, uh, especially, you know, if Dimi is confident enough to run it against the Osiris, which is a losing farm matchup for, for Sobek, as we saw in that game, we adapt in store again. Very exciting. We could see Sir Ket here because it was banned away last time. That's yeah, they might, they might early pick it because they, they tend not to. But, uh, and then I, I think this is comfort it. for a just because he did not have the best game. He got picked off a couple times, especially once Epsilon started oh, picking struggled. up the aggressive place. Yeah, uh, if, we're, if we're gonna see that Sirket though, I want to see a Geb instead of an Athena. Geb I is agree. one of my favorite pairings with Sirket because it allows Sirket to use her entire kit to go in and do damage, and then still have the safety of the Geb shield. But they're gonna be leaning towards that Zongqi, which they played almost every single game. Now I got yelled at when I played Zongqi every single game, so. Let's see what happens. <laughs> this is very, very bad for Payne. Um, Payne de Vionde in, in particular, because Geb is going to get picked here, and, and then Athena, Athena is going to get banned. And then he'll be and forced into Bacchus. Play, yeah, if he has to play Bacchus again, then I am not living enemy. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think Geb was the better pick for the Zhang Kui, because I think Agni could have worked here, right? So even if Epsilon ban away that Zhang, I think Agni would have worked into enemy's comp just the same. Yeah, I'm we've seen Chaos play an amazing Agni, so I'm... I'm I don't know why they love the Jean. I mean, Jean Kui is very good, but we know he has counters. He can be dealt with, and I think they should maybe 
take a step away and consider getting pain his gods because Chaos has other gods that he is very, very good at. Right. I, I don't know why they're shying away from this Acne so much. That's really his highlight god. Not only that, but it does so much burst damage and it's so much harder to deal with, you know, just by buying shell. You know, that's, of course, the ca uh, the pretty normal counter to Zonkwee to get the shell, but you can't just shell Acne. Enemy are taking a long time on this ban, and I think they, I think they realize what we're talking about right now. I think they, they regret it. And I like the Sobek ban because that, that, that's the expected soul lane matchup that I think Dem Demi would have brought in. Now the question is, is Demi going to play Hades, which is also a decent counter to Valona early? I think he'll play Tia. I think Demi that, has that a very good Tier. Yeah. Oh, Yaman's Isis, exciting stuff. This was a, you know, C9 ended up banning this because it was so effective. And I think they won, did they win most of the games with this? It was pretty, it, it was, was pretty up there. Um, I, either I, way, I do expect a Tia or maybe an Osiris out of Demi, but really knowing Demi. I you could just pull a Gandhi and just make numbers up. I think I would almost like to see a <laughs> C9 here and then pick Dionys instead, but I think Isis works just as, just as well. I do like the Chiron pick. I mean, he actually played very well in Chiron having a couple early kills. Very good use of the ultimate coming out. But now the question is, what will Pain de Viande play? All of his typical gods are off the board. A Ares is actually great here. I just don't think he can play it. I actually really like Ares in this spot. He's Ares would be too. great. You can see him. Yeah, it's it's got to be. Yeah. That's that's. Not, that's I think this is a weakness in God pool right here. Like, in A, I love them, but they cannot play Ares outside of a few players. I think we're seeing a parallel to uh, as as sad as to say as to Titan last year with mm -hmm. the weakness of Kanye's God pool. He had very very dominant best Just in the world chones on some gods, but then when he got off those, he was uh, you know not as strong. All right, well, this is it. It's locked in and ready to go. Ataraxia, how do you feel about Epsilon's chances here? Uh, you know you know me, I'm always going to bat my EU boys. I think they have definitely won the draft before I think enemy got what they wanted in the first game. Not this game. Epsilon, take this game. I think Epsilon has the better draft this game, and I give it to Epsilon. Epsilon. I would have, for this game, I would definitely have to agree with you guys. Epsilon, without a doubt, it looks really good for them. All right, guys, here we go. Game number two. Can enemy answer back or will Epsilon extend their series lead? Casters, take it from here. Thank you very much, Golden Boy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's game number two, and Epsilon is once again poised with a hell of a roster. Even Golden Boy is voting against North America. That's a bad sign. Yeah, I mean, when adapting gets Thor, how can Epsilon lose? Well, adapting is Thor, Rapper has Geb. Yeah, well, that's the thing. They did pick Geb, so expect the game to be a little bit slower than it was last game with the Amir. Totally. Yeah, I mean, I'm expecting here to see the uh, this Geb plus Thor plus the Isis combination be a big problem. All right, Chaos coming to the jungle here. What is going to happen? Are they looking for something? They're just trying to ward. We're riding in pretty heavily. Demi by himself. Yeah, they saw Demi kind of moving around to the right side here. He's going to be in the lane, though. He's going to get a good glimpse of them trying to turn this corner here. Yeah, indeed, Demi has spotted out. The entire team will be communicating that, and you'll see that... Uh, Raffer will be perfectly happy to walk now into the enemy jungle. Really clever for him just to hug the wall that way. There was no chance that they were going to pick up a character that's so mobile at this level. They're going to lose the ward coverage, but it doesn't seem like they care all that much. Yeah, enemy just grouping up his five here, hoping and praying that they could catch someone from Epsilon. Oh, Bacchus, out of position. Bacchus just on the left side of mid lane. He's going to get definitely rooted out by the Neath if she wants to. Nope. She missed. Emilito missed. Yeah, just barely, too. Uh, Emilito, not really known for inaccuracy. Surprised that he missed a mechanical shot. Like Still, that. it does force out the belly flop to be skilled. Yeah, it, I mean, Emilita has been super impressive this tournament. Uh, to me, he's been the player, you know, the, uh, the, the Yamin was the unsung team, but I also think Emilito, his rotations have forced so many kills for the side of Epsilon. Well, now, I've, yeah, I've been, I've been trying to prop up Yamin, and now it's it's just fallen over to Emilito. I mean, really, the point their being, whole team. Their they're whole all team. really good. I mean, they're all basically superstars in their own individual roles. And Demi, we, we didn't even really mention this, but Demi playing his, uh, his signature tier. All right, pulled so far, seems pretty clean. Pandivion taking a few more steps than he really should. He's gonna be about six steps away, uh, which is gonna wind up hurting him, but not too much. They have to be careful though. There's a very high damage uh, with Neath on the top side. It looks like Neath should be getting to lane first. And it will be the purple pot Jonquay to try to uh, go toe to toe with the Isis Shear. Her clear is, uh, as per usual, exceptional. Yeah, the biggest thing for me is where is Adapting gonna apply the pressure? They don't really have winning lanes on the side. Adjust taking a lot of damage. Right side camp's definitely going to red. Left side looks like we'll be going to blue. Pain of Beyond once again in a lot of trouble, almost giving up first blood for the second game in a row. In return, though, Emilito has taken quite a bit of poke as well. He does have a weave down, though. He can heal that back up nicely once he gets level three with Unravel. I think he just wants to take the swing, man. I think he wants to go for it. 
Okay, yeah, so uh, yeah, he'll just elect to uh, detonate this uh, this wave. No, no, he won't. Okay. Nice cool. shot from Vidium. Yeah, the, the poke from Vicium there. Nicely done. Pain in the on, trying to control the front line. Raffer still has shockwave. Looks like he's going to be moving forward here to keep the pressure on. Emelito, same thing. Vishim going to be forced back under his tower. They shouldn't lose too much, if any, golds here. They're doing a great job of controlling these creeps. Meanwhile, uh, in the mid lane, uh, the back camps have been picked up. Left side, back camps picked up by Epsilon. Right side, back camps picked up by the Chaos and Adjust combination. And back to lane a little bit faster is, of course, the Isis Thor. They're trying to just keep pace, but it seems like because of that early, uh, I think, misstep by Adjust, uh, it all belongs to Epsilon. They'll have this cleared before it looks like Just will even get there, but you'll see a longer route taken by Chaos as well. Yeah, both mid and jungle players are both trying to reach five as fast as they can to hit that power spike. Smart rotation. The way that Chaos threw that over the wall, allowing Adjust to pick the camp up with a small amount of damage from his mid laner. This ensures oh, that... Check out the right side here. There's a great angle coming out by adapting the Fearless Shane into the wall by Dimmy as well. There is no ultimate available from Salt Machine. And in oh, will come the Thor. Machine. The stun is on. The Mjolnir's a two-man. The spin to win. Dimmy credited with the kill. The second game in a row in which the First Bloods is spelt out by a beautiful wall by adapting. Yeah, Dimmy there did a great job of baiting himself. He was 3 force HP, Bologna was full HP, so Ooh. Bologna thought she could have the pressure and try to fight him. But adapting was on his way and got First Blood. It's going to get worse now for Enemy 2 because when Emilito hits 5 and gets that global presence, it's not going to provide the same level of map pressure as the Constellation shots to the sky. Yeah, he'll, he'll take it safe. Smart. Yeah, he won't find anything there, but it's better to, uh, you know, expend that ultimate and get a little bonus experience than it is to just hold it and not find anything. And already, of course, a first blood has been credited to Epsilon. And the important thing there is adapting just wanted to take a chance. He, by the time Mid Harpy spawn again, his ultimate will be up for that crucial fight. So he controls the, the wave, helps it clear out a little bit faster, locks Cast under the tower, and still is able to rotate for back camps and get back to the mid lane. Dimmy in a lot of trouble, though. That's true damage, and he's gone. Return kill just finally shows up. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice response there coming out of enemy to get the kill you know within the same minute yeah i think both solo lanes have been spoiled from last game last game there was literally no pressure from the junglers in the solo lane and now both of them changed up their game plan emilito taking some decent damage there vidium not going to commit to the shot i thought they were going to go for it if pain hit a good belly flop there with the fact that emilito had no mana left it was a guaranteed kill but they want to play it safe yeah, one of the weaknesses of Chiron is he doesn't have any follow-up cc like most other hunters on her with his spear neath with her root etc it's a little bit weaker as a, a kill lane maybe as the Chiron, but of course a very safe kind of farmer and, and, can, and can deal some nice damage in teamfights with that ultimate as well from very, very long distance. A little bit similar to a, to a ROM in that regard. Oh, Shockwave. Um, yeah, Shockwave going to be used and the Spirit Ball. Uh, she still winds up getting the golden experience as Raffer begins to rotate over towards the left side. Camps are respawning. Right side going to red, left side contested, but they're going to change their route here. Adapting, taking some damage. Vishim smart to use his shot four. CC immunity, looking at Emilito in the back line, seeing if he's going to go for the World Weaver. Yeah, Dapping there went for a somewhat risky play. He knew mid Harpies were coming up, so enemy expected the jungler to be there, but instead he tried to gank the Chiron. Didn't work out. Let me see gold in hand, please. I want to check out where Thor is right now. Um, let's see, pretty far down the list. Actually, just getting his boots online, it seems. Adjust with a slight advantage in gold in hand. Uh, you'll notice actually a little bit more gold as well. Kill over. Oh, is that stolen? Uh, leading golden hand, however, is, is the Bacchus as items are picked up and getting closer and closer to those boots here. Rapper's going to move in. Did he Got steal it. that? He did indeed steal Got the it. purple buff away. And uh, uh -oh. now the Neath Ultimate coming out is going to be blocked by Pain of Beyond just barely at that. Belly flops down here. Yamin does not find it. Pain able to dodge in a beautiful intoxicate. He Woo! Wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ladies and gentlemen, adapting. They're still going, though. Adjust going to find a decent ultimate here. Yamin definitely will go down. The poison does not spread, but a one-for-one -one exchange so far in favor of no one. Yeah, nice rotation there. And once the Isis ultimate is down, it's very easy for Sean Quay to walk in and pop the uh, the bag of demons open and, and find himself a return kill. It's just very dangerous to fight into the Isis. Can we actually hover on adapting, please? I want to see what he's leveling because His with hammer, that damage, yeah, it, it had to have been the hammer, right? Yeah, I was actually thinking that as well. It did a lot of damage on that return swing. Yeah, yeah, there he is, he is level it, four. That's the kind of confidence Adapting has. A lot of players, you know, they want to have that guaranteed spin damage off his Berserk Barrage, but Adapting, confident, went for his hammer first. Yeah, also not to mention that he only has the one point in the Tectonic Rift there, which uh, you need two points to guarantee the double tap. Yeah, actually, this does make sense because he is paired with the Isis, so they have a lot of poke coming out and a lot of CC to guarantee the hammer hit. Salt Machine going back into the jungle, looking for his blue buff now after a successful steal on the top side. Uh, no, instead, we'll be going way back to the back camps. Uh, spreading this, it looks like, with a Just, who is just leaving the base now, will likely either see him take blue or speed as well to maximize his efficiency. Oh, that was a little early. 
Yeah, did, did, I don't think they split that, did they? No, they did not. Yeah, Salt Machine really wanting to get back to lane now. Uh, and maybe they're going to try to set up a kill here, in fact, onto Dimmy. He'll, he'll clear this wave out nice and easy here. Dimmy looks like he wants to continue the aggression, but uh, nope, Sarkat has gone ahead and gone for that orange buff, and Dimmy will walk back to his tower safely. And just does not split that either as he goes over towards the lane, it seems, to hold this. So more pressure on the right than the left right now for blue. Uh, strange, though. Um, I would have expected Adjust to go and split all of these camps. They're not getting any. Yeah, a little bit uncharacteristic from Adjust. You heard Aurora the other day saying how enemy has improved so much in splitting their camps, but this game has shown otherwise. Maybe that might be dissent in the communications, perhaps? I mean, usually they were so communicative, their CC chains were so on point, and it seems a little bit lackluster so far, but they're still keeping pace. It's two to two. Gold actually in their advantage by about 200, and they have 1,200 experience as well. Yeah, just is making a big, a bit better of an impact than he did last game. Last game, he was 0-3 on the Humbots, and this game, 1-0 on the Sirket. Raffer looking at four at this mid camp. That's definitely going to go the way of blue. Raffer going to have to try to get out of this one. Adjust likely to ult here as adapting comes in as well. Lots of ults coming out to Chaos. He's just barely alive. He'll go down. They're trying for it. Adapting going to get hit one more time, and he's going down. It's going to be another one for one. Yeah, I realized about halfway through that he had to cut his losses and not. Uh not get the poison spreading with the team. I Rapper rotating on the backside, doesn't matter. Yaman does pick up the kill to pay to Yaman, in will come adjust again. Cobra's Kiss is gonna be used, and Whoa! the damage coming out from Gambo to Yaman is there. And indeed, it's a turnaround by enemy five to four in seven and a half minutes. I think the adjustment has been made, Bart. Yeah, it looks it looked pretty nice there. I mean, I think I think Serket is a uh, a little bit of a better character in this lineup than Honbots was in the last. I just don't understand how it just gets to play this god every single game. Like every game that he seems he wants to get Serket, he gets it. Why does no one ban this away? Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of teams value that Thor. They value that global pressure and the early game pressure that Thor brings. All right, so coming back down, Salt Machine, another steal. As Demi walks in with, uh, I think, a, a thirst for that blue buff. You can see his mana pool very small right now. He's going to be forced to back soon. Does he have teleport available to him? And will he even go for it if he goes for blink? Yeah, no defensive actives. So the teleport plus the blink means that things like Circat Ultimate are going to be guaranteed to lock that tier down. But, you know, tier's one of the better gods to kind of forego beads or Aegis on as you do have the passive Lawbringer. It states that all CC will be reduced to one second. Which is fine. Which is just... It's just fine. The state of balance. Adjust, walking back into the jungle, looking at Emilito. Cobra's Kiss will hit. Emilito going to take a 10% shot as well. 50% of his health gone in an instant. Yeah, I love the play there by Adjust. The discipline, the presence of mind to know that. Nice dodge. The adapting force of Tamer out there. Oh, and decent damage as well, and uh, technically a dodge as she goes into the wing gust to avoid the knockback. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, like I was saying, adjust with the presence of mind not to use his full kit there, not to waste his ultimate. He knew he didn't have enough damage to one-shot that Neath. Just, did, did he use Cobra's Kiss on the on the goal, Fury? He absolutely must range bullet. Stone Shield no longer does provide that knockup protection as uh, Rapper gets uh, popped up into the air by Pain de Vion, but no major damage coming out of the Yeah, game. this is the perfect time for enemy to nice. be aggressive. Thor does not have his ultimate to surprise and re-engage if enemy goes in. That card only level two right now, but still doing a decent amount of damage as you see Yen and then adapting, going into the lane. And that's, that's a, a kill. kill. Bye bye Emilito. Oh wait, wait, no, too much, too much. Enemy, you gotta find another one. They're up six to four. And now Rapper in a lot of trouble, four. seven. Gotta love the adjustment coming out of enemy here. I mean, they only really go back to Chaos and Vichyum's gods with the Zhang Kui and the Chiron. Chiron seems to be a, a fine hunter pick. It's the Zhang Kui that really is a surprising to me that they go back to it here. But nonetheless, adjust and Pain to Beyond coming up huge in this game. Th this is the difference between Chiron and Neath. They're both similar in their kits and what they're supposed to do, but Chiron is so much harder to gank. And that's her cat. If she was trying to gank the Chiron, probably wouldn't have gotten the kill for the Neath. It was guaranteed. The first oh. real lead of the game, though. Saw Machine getting soloed by Dimmy. Uh, chance of ooh in the crowd. That shouldn't happen. That's one of the first real kind of pure one-on-one -on -one solos we've seen uh, from the top four teams in this tournament. And Dimmy coming up big against Salt Machine there. I mean, when you man fight the tier, you always got to be worried about that burst heal. You know, uh, I was talking to Cyclone about two weeks ago, and he was talking about how there is never an excuse for you to be soloed in the solo lane um, if you pick a warrior or a guardian. Shout out to uh, Red Pot Odin. Red Pot. Oh, ooh, oh, oh <laughs> Bart, come on. Ooh. I'm going to walk away from that one. Ooh. Well, speaking of which, let's take a look into the solo lane here and see exactly how Dimmy was able to come up big against Salt Machine. And yeah, let me look. He, he starts with a big, big HP disadvantage with those tower shots helping even things out. I'm Dimmy. expecting to, uh, like a double fearless kind of thing here. Yeah, it's with him healing on the back line. Got to be footsies. 
See what happens. Salt Machine going to move forward here. Blinks pass, throws him right back. Gets a good portion of the creeps, too. He's going to hit the bludgeon, but yeah, wow. heal. One hit canceled directly into the fearless. Beautiful kill. How perfect Dimmy played there. He had exactly enough mana to use his whole kit as he gets engaged on here by Adjust. Salt's flowing, though, as Adjust comes over for a turn kill. Nothing going to find just yet. And Dimmy happy to take the damage as he heals right back up to 100%. I mean, how many smite players in Dimmy's position would have had the presence of mind to know you could kill the Bologna like that with... I didn't one fourth HP. I, yeah, I, I would have. If you would have told me, hey, it's a, it's a just under half HP Bologna, I'd say you know, just don't even no try. Way. The biggest yeah. part of that was the blink. The repositioning is what hurt her so it's badly. Archers, yeah. I just didn't see it at all. Oh, here we go. Left Speaking side of the map. Chiron finds himself he doesn't see it. in an awkward position. The ultimate's going to come down as well. Walls. Holding the stun. And yeah, Vishim is dead Walls. to rights. Oh, he missed. He missed. Wow, a rare, rare misplay there by adapting. Does allow four. Here comes Adjust to try to, to turn come it back around. In. No problem. Adjust moves in. He's not going to find too much as the stone shield comes out onto adapting, but narrowly avoiding a kill there is enemy and big cooldowns used to try to get that one. That was three ultimates for the hunter. I, I don't think I've ever seen him miss a shot like that before. Yeah, I mean, but that also goes to show how why Kyra is such a popular pick. He is almost impossible to gain. All right, so Tyron's going to get some free experience here. Wait, over on the left side, they continue to get aggressive. No, she's going to jump out after maybe overstating her play a little bit, but that's fine. 3-0 and 3 for Adjust Circuit here through the first 12 and a half minutes, and it's 1,900 experience, 1,700 gold in favor of the North American squad. Enemy, as they look to draw even one game apiece here in this best of five. I think one of the biggest things for Enemy right now is their leader, their shot caller. Payne Deviant is playing with the lead on the get. Last game, he was the one targeted. He was the one that fell behind right away. Another uh, Sentry Ward pickup right there as Vishium gains 50 gold. It's going to rotate over towards the mid lane. Mid camp's coming up on both sides, and so far it seems like the blue team has complete control over both. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like they have no idea that they're coming up. In the mid lane, lane is pushed. I mean, this looks good for them to grab both. 30 minutes here of the full shell has been completed now onto the Geb to help mitigate some of that Zhang Kui damage. We should see Epsilon be able to stand up a little bit taller in the next fight. Starting him up, left side, definitely going to blue, right side, available for contest. As we see Epsilon starting to group up, they're going to control this area, Adjust going to be forced away. Yeah, I think they'll now realize that uh, <laughs> it did take those left side camps. Enemy moving forward, maybe thinking about sieging this tier one as they have moved their Hunter over into the mid lane as well. A big grouping from the North American team as they look to find a pick. Yeah, there's just not much to do around the map. A lot of the buffs are down. The only thing that's point of contention are these mid harpies, but Epsilon's giving them away for free. Seven to five still. Enemy starting to, I think, really start taking this one away. Uh, they did have that one transgression with the kill over in solo, but aside from that, they've either sustained or increased the lead since we've seen them start it. Yeah, they're doing a great job right now of holding back, farming, getting their bust, and what they're really waiting for is for this gold period to spawn. Let's talk a little bit about the hunter itemization here, Zatman, while we, uh, of course, have you on the commentary desk. It does look like Emilito will be moving into the Ikaval, where on the other side, it will be the Executioner pickup by Chiron. What do you think about those those selections and how do you think that's going to factor into maybe the 17 18 minute mark yeah the neath is going to be able to outbox the chiron once the ikaval is done it's a, it's the best <laughs> boxing item in the game and you could see last time or last game against c9 both hunters went for the transcendence this time around they're going for the boots into soul leader they're afraid of all the pressure that both junglers are going to put in the dueling and they want to be as tanky as possible just a little bit more clear going on. Gold Fury about to respawn. Just over 20 seconds. Uh, both hunters, it seems, are in a pretty decent spot. You know, that man talking about the builds. That Iqbal, I think, is really, really effective in terms of tanking the Gold Fury. Just being able to increase the damage for such a small price point. And given the fact that she's behind by 600 gold, I mean, I think that's the biggest point. Yeah, that, that's definitely the biggest point. Also, it gives you a bit more attack speed than the Executioner, which will allow you to have more heal per second. Which is good, too, as, as well for Neath, who doesn't have that steroid. I've always wanted to steal the attack speed as opposed to just taking it away. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm really actually surprised that Chiron did, chose, did choose to go the Executioner before they could Well, it does give them a little bit uh, better objective clear with the Executioner, maybe looking for the Gold Fury in the mid-game uh, to factor in heavily into their game plan as enemy. You can see they've warded pretty heavily on this side of the map as well. Just rotating back into mid lane, the Gold Fury has respawned. The next major turn is going to result in this Gold Fury. I don't think either team is going to bait it out too early. They're going to look for someone to back, or they're going to look for a kill as it just takes about a third of his health. Or just simply poking out one of the targets sufficiently to force the back. Uh, could be enough to even go for the Gold Fury. In fact, maybe just that small advantage is enough as they see enemy shading over to the right side as Epsilon. They're going to move into the Gold Fury's lair. 
I don't think Bologna can really do much right here. She can't back safely. She can't use her teleport because it's level one. It gets stopped by just damage. And for her to stop the teleport, it would result in her having to use her ultimate. And then right afterwards, Tyr would be able to rotate. This is a really good spot for Dimmy and the rest of Epsilon. Yeah, speaking of Dimmy, he was behind all early game, got his blue buff stolen. And now look at him on Salt Machine's blue buff, looking to steal it. That's what happens when you and soul somebody, it. right? Oh man, Dimmy, he's getting smacked around by this Frostbound Hammer. God bless. He's gonna take about 50% of his HP there before he's forced to heal it back up. Yemen's oh. gonna stun out Pain of Beyond. They're gonna use a Cataclysm and as again. well. Really and trying again. to take down Too the much. enemy support here. Too Can much. Pain get out of this one somehow? Let's take a listen in with the enemy comms. Does it look like they may be able to turn this fight? I can't be there, I can't be there. Throw off me, throw off me. We need to have a reset. We need to have a reset. Throw off me, throw off me. Careful, tell you right side, right side. I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. I'm trying to... Yeah, we should reset, 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 reset. That's uh, all the ultimates we said. Coming yeah. underneath. I'm rotating back in. I got a really, They're good, really, really low. Good really low. They have no ultimates. They use right, they every single ultimate. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. They can't do this. Can we I don't pressure in? We have self. Yeah, 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 pressure myself. They're in mid. They're in mid. Yo, can we go gold? They're all. They're, they're all, all mid. No they're all mid still. They're all no I'm starting. I'm starting. Yeah, 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 yeah,
Yeah. Is this enough now for Enemy to take the Gold Fury on the back of that? No, they can't take the Gold Fury here. Dimmy is just too strong. He's level 19. He's I love his itemization choices. He knew he was snowballing. He knew Whoa. he wasn't getting focused in these fights, so he went for a penetration item to try to help. He's still damage. going in, using that heal effectively. Smart dash by Dishim to try to keep Dimmy locked down in front, but Chaos is way too tanky, and thanks to the beads, Vidium will get away safely. Yeah, there's not much they can really do about that tier, similar to the Bologna in the regards of uh, the amount of power that he does have, given his tankiness, and, and the burst heal from tier is, is very... Uh, Sneaky. I mean, like, it, it'll trick you sometimes. Ooh. Whoa! Whoa! A little bonus attack speed there from the Emilito's <laughs> Neath is enough to find that ward. I mean, you see he has a balance plate on top of the Ikeval. All right, so Emilito is going to move into the mid lane here against Adjust. The mid laner is absent as we see Yaman rotating in. Chaos coming back as well. Gold Fury still available. Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing here is what can Dimmy do to disrupt the back line? You saw Bologna in the last team fight. She zoned out four people by herself. And Dimmy, he wasn't really able to have the same effect. Pain to be on, rotating over through his own ward. He's going to stay safe, but he is spotted. Adapting, moving in, it seems, to the Gold Fury. That'll be a ward clear, it seems, for him as well. 22 minutes elapsed here, this one. 22 kills in 22 minutes. Convenient for me. Uh, 48,000 gold to 47,000 gold. Just about the 1K difference between the two squads. This one is very, very even. An enemy showing up big in this game, though, but the question for me is, can they go on to win this game, and then can they hey. turn that into another victory in the game three to move up ahead? Thor is up, and we're going to try this one again. We saw this gank fail earlier. Vishim now taking a ton of damage, and yet again, not enough damage to burst on the Chiron. That is the difference between a Soul Eater and otherwise is that 300 HP factoring in big. Yeah, and the biggest thing is we asked why Chiron didn't go to the Ichabod, but look, he went and he's going for another flat penetration item. So he's I going mean, for more ability damage. He wants his two to hurt. He wants his AOE one to hurt. We'll so see how that pans out. Jotun's, Brawler's, or Titan's Bane? Where would you go? Jotun's, I think he's going. Going sure. for extra two? Yeah. I think it might be the Brawler's here. Looking at the Isis, the Neath, and the Tear, uh, there's, there's sufficient healing there to make the item worthwhile. It yeah. comes down to really, yeah, do you want the cooldown reduction or where you prefer the, the bonus pen? And of course, there's a Titan's Bane as well, which increases your damage on towers, structures, and of course, your shots all around. I mean, I think all three have merit, and plus there's a cost difference between them. I think anything that he takes out of this tree is going to be useful. Yeah, I think he just wants to stay away from the crit because he thinks he's going to have to focus the Geb down a lot. And if you note, Geb's passive, it minimizes the damage that crit does, which is awesome. Yeah. Bless. Uh, going back into the Gold Fury area, it seems like Vishim's going to be able to pull this one. Spotted immediately by Yamin and Rafa. Rafa rolling in real deep to make sure they stop that. Uh, over in the solo lane, Salt Machine seems unchecked here as Dimmy is hanging out in mid. Yeah, I find it hard to believe there's only been one Gold Fury successfully taken. Rafa dumped Gebolt? his ultimate. Yeah, Cataclysm was used there. Pain of the on getting a stun off. This is so far a good exchange for enemy. Tower going down in favor of Assault Machine. Another 500 gold win for enemy. And Yaman's wing got doing less and less to the enemy squad here. Pain of Yon barely tickled. You notice Pain of Yon did get a two-man belly flop, but they don't they don't need a fight. Dimmy does not have his teleport up, Bologna does, and this is why you see Bologna getting all this free push. Ulting over the wall to force Salt Machine away. He continues to battle out on the tower. He's going right for the tier two. No, he's going to be forced away and not in the direction I assume he wants to go top side. Oh, actually, no, this is getting really low. Raff are going to force these, force the reset. Adjust getting tanked down. They're going to steal it away, and Isis Ult going to clean that one up. Europe with coming up big. And this is exactly why you saw enemy be so reticent to go into the Gold Fury there. That Ice Ultimate just so good. Yaman with the Juke Shoes on will still go down to Chaos. Raffer into trouble as well. He will fall to the Salt Machine. Emilito adapting and Dimmy going to try to make their way out of this one, but carted up. There's multiple targets there. The stun from adapting. Tower fell. Uh, not a tremendous wall there. The Tier 2 did go down the right side. The Fearless Chain hits three, but Dimmy now finds himself in a tough spot. Trying to dash away. He's going to fall as well. And Chaos. Five kills before falling down with a rampage on the Zhang Kui. Yeah, even though Enemy did get the Gold Fury stolen, this was 100% worth for Enemy. They won the team fight, and they got the Tier 2 tower, which is equivalent to what Gold Fury would give you at this point in the game. 15 to 10 right now. Enemy now leads Epsilon for real. Look at that. The USA chance begin as a 2,700 gold lead extends to 32. They're going to go towards the right side of the map, start cleaning it up, or are they going to pressure into the Tier 2? Adapting, looking for a way in. The buffs are down up here. I mean, there is a there is a blue buff. Not I mean, much to gain. Here's the thing, though. Even with all the success that the enemy has seen around the map here, they haven't transitioned any of these advantages into something substantial that they can really look to win the game off of. They found a tier two on the right side, which does expose one of the phoenixes, but still, these leads are in the, about the three to 4,000 range. They're going to need a little bit more than that to feel comfortable trying to break the base. A fire giant definitely going to be the big decider still as we approach the 26-minute mark.
He's adjust is looking great this game. 4-2-7 back into his comfort, comfort zone with Sir Ket. I mean, let, let's take a look at the player damage. You'll see Chaos on top. Uh, wow, actually, Demi putting up 15,000. Yeah, I mean, Demi has been unchecked in a lot of these team fights. Oh, my. Oh, Geb Shield. Geb Shield. Geb Shield. Yeah, no that ultimate was used. It's not going to be enough to tick down much more than the stone shield there. It's adapting. Will be forced back to the base, but there's not a big play the enemy can make over here on the right side. They're not in position to take the fire giant. They can't pressure a tower over here. So it was uh, ultimately just a wasted Bologna and Circuit ultimate there, not finding the Thor. Yeah, the biggest thing for me is Thor is behind, and now which target is he going to decide to go on? The Zonkui is extremely tanky with Ethereal Staff and Hide of the Urchin. Hmm. I want to see Gem of Isolation, too. Yeah, he actually, that actually might be his fifth item for sure. Get those crazy slows going, especially if they can wait out either the Heavenly or the Shell. That way the ult is still providing something. I think that would be really effective. Yeah, Chaos providing a, uh, a ton of damage, though, in these fights. Just that Spear of the Magus plus the Pen Boots. Uh, enough to get uh -oh. seven kills. That was Trouble not the backflip he was looking for. On the for. left side is Emilito. The ultimate's coming through from Chiron, and down he will go indeed. And Just now finds himself some trouble, but it's going to be avoided by the ever so nimble Sir Ket. Vichyum now going to make his way out of this fight. Salt Machine's coming in as well. Right, but Dimmy's taunted away. Vichyum, no, oh, the wall is off from Adapti. He should be able to clean this up with the ultimate, but he may elect to go for the higher chance target. Knockup's going to be there by Raffer to get that kill, and now. Adapting force to run out of this one. He's Heavenly flying. Agility, the ghost coming in in a big way, but Yaman Spirit Ball gonna hold them out for now. Two more ghosts still pending, but not taking enough damage here as uh -oh. enemy to feel safe for Epsilon. Salt Machine's in a bad spot, forced to ult away. Damage coming through. Salt Machine stuck in the ultimate. Slowed, not enough damage, but it will be cleaned up. Yaman answers back. Pain of the on now under the tower from the Fearless Power Cleave. Going for it. Dimmy actually gonna hit Stone Shield, but just wow. getting baited. And it's gonna be Epsilon turning it around. Absolutely unbelievable that Epsilon's able Wait to turn that fight back around. Wait a second. Raffer with the knockup. They're gonna look for Pain of the on. He has Wait oh, a second. Oh, the point forward. And Wait the Fearless Save. And the Silence. And the Spirit Ball. Ladies and gentlemen, Epsilon's Yaman is absolutely unstoppable. Let's go back to the ground. Perhaps here, Epsilon shrinking the lead. It was 3,200, and obviously way down to 15. Experience down to 12. We got ourselves a game here, boys. Yeah, and actually, it looks like Epsilon's rushing that fire giant. They know oh, they have yeah, this cure this. with uh, with ice. Oh boy! And, damage and look, the him. warrior's bane has been started up by Adapte. He can do a reasonable amount of damage to this fire giant as his team moves in. Chaos. Chaos is going to be in position as is Vichium here in just a few moments. Chaos, I mean, we saw him make the biggest play of the tournament so far on his Jonque earlier on in the placement rounds. Chaos, I mean, the, the one thing that Jonque does not have here is a lot of burst damage to really make this much, to make much out of it. But Vishim does have that Chiron ultimate that he can fire off from long range. Very, very low is the Fire Giant now, under 2,000 HP. Here he's going for it. And no, it's oh. too late. There's just no way they can disrupt this. They're going to try to get some return damage out of it, but the wall from adapting is going to make the path just too long. And away will go the Thor. The Anvil of Dawn. Great play by Epsilon there. You could see them all running around this fire giant. They stopped their DPS. Yamin called that his ultimate was up any second now. They waited for the ultimate, put the Ice Assault down, and guaranteed the fire giant kill. That was just beautiful. I and mean, I really like the Thor ult at the end, too. Just, hey, I'm not going to mess with this. Oh, I'm not going to try to make a play here. Dimmy teleports back in. Enemy hot off that one. They're trying to get away. Salt Machine It looks like should be safe here. Raffer trying to go real deep. Adjust over on the left, keeping the flank covered, and it seems like they'll get away, but the fight's going to come to them one way or yeah. another. And there's a lot up. There's a lot up. There's two towers in the mid lane, plus a gold fury up for Epsilon. Let's take a listen in with the comms of the European boys in blue as they try to take down enemy. 15. I'm just going to chunk me out to heaven, okay? Right. Yeah, Buck's going to jump in, probably. I rooted Buck, yes? Good job. I Buck, Buck, him. Is poked. Buck, Buck is poked. Buck is poked. I got Bellona. Buy us. So Buy us. Okay. We'll be fine. Watch out, boys. Bellona, 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 I'm ulting in, 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 i am ulting in 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 i am just go tower next time, yeah? Yeah, yeah I should've, if I beat... What about gold? What about gold? We're gonna have to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to back, I have to back. Okay. Don't, just let them have it then. I'm staying around, I'm staying around. We shouldn't, I feel like. Okay, right. I don't think we should give it in. I'm here. Poke him. Throw on it, throw on it, throw on it. Fuck him, they're really poked, they're really poked. Uh, they're really poked. They're really poked. They're trying to off HP. I still have beats, huh? Just careful. I got beats and Aegis. I have blink, I have blink in the middle. No, I have blink now. Yeah, take it. Get ready to drop it. Get ready to drop it. I'm g
I'm gonna feel the circuit, circuit piece down. Circuit. She got, you got a dash, you got a dash. Yeah. I'm off here, I got her, I got her, I got her. Get the goal, guys. Nice. Get a goal, guys. All right, Yo, Tyrone, Tyrone. Tyron. I'm coming to me, I'm coming to me. I'll be fine, I'll be fine. Tyrone, I'll be fine. Tyrone, I'll be fine. Push towers. I'm getting rolled. Objectives, objectives. Rolled them down. I got rolled down. Can someone do red? Yeah. I don't want to go there, right alone. I'm just I'll backing. Come, I'll come to A couple of things really stand out to me from the comms of Epsilon there. You heard, maybe most interestingly, that razor edge between should we give up the Gold Fury or should we aggress into it? And you saw the second that they walked in and really like made their presence known, enemy backed right off. And it just goes to show you how kind of minute the decision making is in a game of Smite and how much it can impact the mid game and late game. Yeah, speaking of decision making, you see enemy did this twice already. They are trying to bite off a little bit more than they can chew. They dove the tier two on the left while the tier one stuff, they paid the price. They tried to do the gold free while they're both half HP, half mana, and they paid the price again. A top side of 3,200 for enemy has now resulted in 2,000 for Epsilon, a 5,200 gold swing over just the last 10 minutes or so. Uh, I mean, they just look great. That's gonna be another 500 as they continue to pressure Pain to be on back. Belly flop down, he's gonna get poked. Yeah, I'll take some decent damage here, but he does have the mid guardian mail up and you saw that proc out on Emilito, the ice shards. And so it's gonna be very hard for them to burst him down at least through physical in hand damage. They're trying to rush this down, it seems. Fire Giant's still available here for 27 seconds. They want to use this time to get at least 1,500 more gold. Well, you have Dimmy uh, basically freezing out Salt Machine far on the right side here. So once those Soul Laners elect to rotate, we'll probably see the fight break out. Going for it. Stone Shield was just used prematurely uh, just to try to get some of the damage, I guess, away from the card. Uh, doesn't look like a Just is going to commit to this. The end of the Fire Giant succeeds. 1,500 more gold. Epsilon's lead extends. Exactly. And look for Epsilon to maybe try to take another tower, but the biggest thing is they don't want to fight. No team wants to fight this close to the Fire Giant respawn. Yeah, I mean, they used the last basically three seconds of the Fire Giant buff there to find that extra tower and a ton of income coming in. 5,000 experience and 4,000 gold in favor of Epsilon. I got to disagree, Zat, man. Dimmy looked like he wants to fight there. <laughs> <laughs> Dimmy's just throwing his weight around. You know, he's super fed. He's actually full build. Last item, Wing Blade. Wow, yeah, he's, wow, he's completely full build. I mean, at this point, he could probably look to sell one of his cheaper items, but, I mean, I guess his cheapest item is Wing Blade. He, he just it. doesn't want to get slowed down by Chaos, by the Zonkui. And uh, he wants to get into the back line and just wreak as much havoc as he can. I mean, the only item he could really sell at this point, maybe the Rune Forge and pick up something more like a Mail work if he's worried, or Mail. Yeah, Mail if he's worried about yeah. you know, first damage CDR. coming out. But uh, yeah, it, it, besides that, he's pretty much in a uh, great spot. No, he's pretty close to Mac. Oh, no, yeah, wing blade and the Wing Blade. Of Valor, so, That's right. Um, there's not really room for another CDR item. It could, you could see that Rune Forge sold for perhaps a Bulwark if, if he just doesn't want to yes. ever risk getting bursted down. Through their own Sentry Ward. That means it's not covered. Adjust going to be forced to beat. He's used all of his movement, adapting. Oh. No, a little bit too soon. But he knew he had to take it from the max yeah. distance because Adjust does have that. Actually, the speed buff just wore off. But the biggest thing there is getting the beads of Sir Ketch. She can't go in now and look to ultimate the back line because she can't get out. It wants CC and she's dead. Blown is going to pour it in. Raffer, Stone Shields himself here. And it does look like Epsilon wants to fight rather than farm the Fire Giant here looking for these kills. Just in trouble. He does not have beads. He's going to be forced away. He's out of the fight completely. Sir Ket will offer next to nothing in this engagement. Raffer blinking in on the bottom side. Uh, wow, we actually have adapting coming in too. A just beautiful counter with the Cobra's kiss. But Dimmy, unimpressed, continues wow. forward. Chaos stunned out the Fearless Chain there from Dimmy, but in the meantime, Pandavion oh. takes a ton of damage and gets double tapped by adapting. The wall is there as well to prevent any major follow-up. Salt Machine pops the shield of the Underworld, but it's maybe a little bit too early there. He's not going to reflect a significant amount of damage. Salt Machine about halfway down. Teleport on cooldown. We're looking at Vishium and Chaos here for the control. Yeah, I mean, looking for an opportunity to throw a big Spirit Ball. Salt Machine's caught. Is he going to be? No, just slightly outside the range. Heavenly Agility going to get popped. Adapting beads for cooldown. Looking for it. Bologna trying to ult away. She's actually baiting fairly efficiently, and Chaos has a good line to this. Yeah, and Burst heals himself with the Isis ultimate, and then the Stone Shield comes out. Spear Paul off the mark yet again. Ebony's doing a good job of playing the footsies game. I mean, they're basically staying right outside oh, of the range of that Spirit Ball. Bates? No, okay, we actually got a back. It looks like Adapting has taken a trip back. He's doing his best to walk away from this. Yeah, and this is where Bacchus's teleport pickup may come to hurt them at the end game. If he had a weakening first there, he wouldn't, Isis wouldn't have been able to ultimate underneath the tower and reset their HP bars. Dimmy facing down against a few. Vishim cleaning up the blue buff. 
He's just trying to control the area. Salt Machine, very smart, placing a Sentry Ward down. They have now Vision Control in this area. Timmy uh, taking a few they shots. Dash. Whoa, there, he's going right to the back line. Yeah, they got Vishium's dash there with the Neath Spirit, or sorry, him. World Weaver, and that's going to result in a kill. Chaos is going to be zoned out by Adapting, who's going to rally back towards his team. It's just Salt Machine on an island here, completely isolated too. down. He will fall as well. That's two members down on the side of Enemy for more than a minute as Epsilon will look to move in. No, they're going to spear ball whoa, through the wall. Whoa, 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 the fear is from Timmy. They're early enough. They'll find the beads yet again. From the enemy juggler adapting with the wall. Another One more spirit ball or a Mjolnir's achievement to do it, but it doesn't matter. They force adjust so far into the fight. Fire Giant is free. It is the second time adjust has escaped what seems like certain death with a beautiful max range Cobra's kiss as a deterrent to their movement. Beautiful. He's gonna get out of there. Uh, he has his ultimate available, but no beads for 70 seconds. Yeah, Epsilon is playing this fire giant dance so perfectly. They're have they have vision control, they fade in these face checks, That's they it. get the beads, and then they go on the people that don't have beads. Pain to be on getting pushed away by adapting fire giant going down the lead be damned epsilon fights their way back and takes the first fire giant of the game yeah really great play by uh raffer there you know normally when uh, the enemy team knows that fire giant's being aggressed on they will rush down the gold free but raffer he had that in check he went to the gold free made sure enemy wasn't doing it yeah that 3,000 gold 4,000 gold uh and experience advantage enemy had just felt so tenuous there in the mid game i mean they hadn't really taken a significant advantage uh, or objective really off of it. And now you see uh, a really Epsilon putting on a clinic of what to do with the lead. The second that they get that 1,000 to 2,000 gold lead, they immediately just start forcing enemy into the fights at the Gold Fury and the Fire Giant. And they'll take a couple of each into their coffers. 18 to 17 to kills at 37 minutes. This is one of the longer games we've seen in all of the Smite World Championships. Enemy putting up a good show, but I have to go way back to that Gold Fury. They kept resetting it. I didn't know why they were trying to go for it, and eventually they just kind of gave it away. Epsilon fought back from it beautifully, and, and now they find themselves, what, 8K in the lead? When did that even happen? Yeah, I mean, that early in the game, you have to make a decisive call. You're going to do Gold Fury? Do it. If not, don't, because no one can really tank the Gold Fury at that level of the game without losing over half their HP. You know, I, I do want to point out, uh, to, to go back in time yet again, it's the solo lane, uh, solo kill for Dimmy that maybe breaks this game wide open here. Uh, maybe not so much in terms of the farm that he gets out of it, but remember, Dimmy is coming into this tournament basically playing uh, pretty ill. He's fairly sick, and, and that extra confidence boost and really kind of maybe feeling himself now that he solos down what is ostensibly the best solo laner in North America, and, and it's really turned into an eight, two, and six. Hey, they're in Worlds. I guess so, <laughs> yeah, but he got soloed. <laughs> Dimmy's looking too strong, and like you said, he, he's playing ill. I mean, he's playing out of his mind right now. Raffer in the back line, trying to control. Salt Machine over committing super hard here. If he doesn't come up big, he's going to come down real quick. Bacchus, Belly Fox going to find a bunch, as will the Intoxicate, but the backside adapting is unchecked. Uh, Chaos going to try to move forward, but I do not think that ultimate's going to be enough. Indeed, it will not. The Chiron ultimate coming through as well, but it isn't there. Remember, that Bacchus bought a teleport in this game, and the shell just came up huge. Adapting, looking to chase down a just here. This time, he will sidestep the Cobra's Kiss, but I, I do think that uh, they're maybe overcommitting to the left side here to try to find this circuit. Is she really that important? Emilito getting a spirit arrow. Beautiful. Rue going to force the beads away from Bedium. We got a teleport coming right back in. Salt Machine into the fight. He gets away barely. Did not get his full health. Needed another second. Yeah, Still not a lot of damage coming to this tower. Adapting over to the left side. He's going to move up as the Thor. Vishim in a lot of trouble here. He's got to be the one. target. Yes, got him. And there's a CC chain. Down will go the horseman. Assault Machine rotates back in. Remember, he died at the very beginning of this fight. And Epsilon is standing outside the Tier 2 tower farming kills. Raffer moving right in the Tier 2, getting started. Another 1,500 gold going down. There's no one on enemy willing to go for this. Yeah, there's no way enemy can defend it. I mean, Epsilon, everyone, or four people are alive with Fire Giant buff. There's no way they can win the 4v3. I mean, did you guys think at the beginning of this game that Epsilon had the better late game? I think it just comes down to that they have the better late game as a team. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, I mean, they, they've, they've outplayed enemy here now past about the 25 minute mark. Yeah, I mean, what it comes down to is the Gep pick. The Gep is by far probably the best late game guardian in the game, especially compared to Bacchus. His ultimate does percentage damage. So as the game ramps up, more and more people have more and more HP and the Gep ult scales really well into the late game. I'm just in the mid lane alone right now. Fire Giant falling off in just about 30 seconds. I'm expecting that we're going to see Epsilon take a softer route and continue to fight once we have seen the respawn of the main objective. Yeah, they'll be perfectly happy to fight here with an 11,000 gold lead. In fact, take a look at the Neath build. It's a crusher. They are looking to end this game. You said crusher? I said crusher. Hello? Is that all right? 
Hey, it does give you a, uh, a nice amount of pen up against yeah. those towers and the bonus MS. Yeah, I mean, this is the the mage Neath build. You know, you build all flat pens, so her abilities do maximum amount of damage. Her scaling is very high. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see even uh, the Soul Eater, potentially Executioner, or the Ikaval. Uh, probably the Ikaval get replaced by Transcendence later on in this build. Um, once he, he likes to go for that seventh slot. Well, I mean, it does give him penetration, right? The Ikaval? Yeah. Yeah, but the Transcendence gives you so much flat power with the mana pool of a level 20 Neath that... Uh, it, it may be worth it just if you're looking for those spirit arrows to really, really hit hard. World Weaver gets used into the bees. Vishim now a sitting duck. Should they commit to him well, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. CC oh. chain, beautiful there. Salt Machine takes a clean 50. It's going to get worse. And yeah, going up as well is going to be adapting. Going to try to fight in the choke here if enemy looks to move in. And uh, yeah, I mean, another oh miss there God. by adapting. And But the Cataclysm is still going to be used. They're going to dump basically everything there. You see a 97 damage crit. I just figured it out. The counter to Bologna is investing all five people into her, you know, while everyone else watches. That Ice was ultimate coming up big as well for the damage out of the Pain Beyond. He's going to fall. Chaos channeling the damage in from the Zhongkui. But it's just too little, too late at 41 minutes. The Ghost not doing enough. Emelito on the backside healing himself another up. One. And continuing to channel in the in-hands. The knock-up from the Geb is enough to find the kill. His Midgardian Mail factoring in big there as well. It's a Spirit Rope Midgardian Mail for that Geb. He's very, very hard to take down in comparison I to the I thought you were talking about Thor. Also has Spirit Rope and Midgardian Mail. Yeah, you can see they're just they're just saying, okay, look, the only thing that's really going to be a major problem in these fights is going to be Bologna and Chiron and, uh, well, Midgardian Mail plus Spirit Rope says uh, not much you can do. They're starting this up. Not doing a lot of damage. Usually you want to see them wait a little while longer. Uh, but Dimmy was actually doing this mostly in blue stance, so he didn't have as much power as he normally would have. Uh, even so, Emilito in tow. Nobody spot. answering from enemy. They're giving up another FG. Yeah, Dimmy has uh, 3,000 HP on the tier here. He's perfectly happy to take the Fire Giant up for a couple minutes for his team to move in. And down it will fall. Fire Giant number three, three? going to the way of Epsilon at 42 minutes. Yeah, I mean, I can't believe they got three Fire Giants so far, but Emmy is doing a good job of defending their base here. Uh, they had to give up that Fire Giant. What they're hoping for right now is Epsilon, you know, over committing, over diving, feel a little bit overconfident, maybe dive the Titan. That's the only way they could probably win a team fight. For the second game in a row here, you know, I... Adapting Thor in this tournament has not been adapting Thor. It's been his other god pool that's really been the problem. And if enemy can't find a way to force Epsilon to change up their strategy through through it, I mean, they basically have to win the next game, right? This one looks very, very dire for them. And, and what we sometimes will see in situations like this is that game one, you get beat. Game two, you get a little better. And then game three, it really comes down to, did you improve enough over game two? Because we got to think, enemy definitely wins the fourth game in that set because they're getting better and better each game. Do they still have it left in the tank? Is now they're going to look to defend their base versus Epsilon, who looks very, very hungry for a win here. All three birds still available as Raffer takes to the front line. Beautiful spirit My wall, double God. taps across the board. And there's the Cataclysm forcing out both tanky targets immediately in the back line. Sir Ket trying for something, but he's going to adjust to that respawn timer as he's got a clean 60 till we see him again. Yeah, Chaos left his ultimate as well there and did basically nothing. In will come Epsilon as they're going to look to take out a couple of the Phoenixes here before they try for the Titan. No towers remaining. The Titan is going to be under about 8,000 HP when they do elect to go in. It's going to go right across the board. No way for this to be stopped here. Dimmy too tanky and they're investing into him. Chaos out of position, blocked off by the wall. He's going to go down in just a second. Another kill for Dimmy. Salt Machine getting sent back. Does he have his ultimate? Does he have a way away from this? It seems for now adapting very low, getting saved by the shield just barely. And out, adapting will go. No dot on him. He's going to be fine for now. Fire Giant buff does heal him back up. Percentage HP, remember? Bad. Salt Machine knocked up. He's going to go down as well. Spirit Ball not even needed. Adapting moving back in. Is this going to be enough to finish the game? As Epsilon still has all five members standing with the Fire Giant buff versus just a Bacchus and a Chiron. They're trying for it. Vedium trying to throw some shots out. Adapting, taking to the sky. Ult's going to go back. Timmy goes into the fountain to keep Vishim out. They're trying for it. He's low, but he's actually going to... No, he's dead. They got him in the fountain. Dimmy does go down with the Titan starting to fall down now under 3,000 HP and indeed Epsilon will win game number two forcing a match point and a championship point versus enemy esports. Almost one year ago exactly this is where Cloud9 stood two to zero. Titan however made a beautiful stand as they took the next two that's still possible. Yeah I mean the biggest thing enemy needs to do is make the adjustment in the picks and bands. You can see the consistent thing in Epsilon's draft is the Neath and the Thor. Yes. They, and they love that kind of line damage poke. Thor stuns, Neath roots, Thor hammers, Isis fall. It's a lot of damage. Yeah, I mean, just looking at the first three picks in that draft, it looked like it was going very heavily in favor of Epsilon. I do think that there wasn't enough impact out of Salt Machine's Bologna 
I mean, he did get soloed, but that's not really what I'm, I'm trying to highlight here. I mean, he basically, they first picked it, and they gave up so much comfort to Epsilon in return, the Neath, the Geb, the Thor, they got in their first three picks, that it just didn't really factor into a, a successful strategy. I mean, teleport on Bacchus, I just, I'm not in there. Yeah, you heard Payne make that call saying it's worth it. They made, they didn't know they weren't on Gold Fury, didn't have sufficient ward coverage to f really make the right call there. Yeah, a lot of those team fights that Ice Assault paid dividends when they they re got their HP and the, where the weakening would have prevented them. They, maybe they would have won those team fights. Well, guys, that's game number two. Game number three coming on the back of this one. Epsilon up two games to nothing over enemy. Golden Boy and the Analyst Freeze break down game number two. Thank you so much, Bart. Man, what a game. It had it had a little bit of everything in there from the beginning, in, you know, first couple of engagements, to the, or really, you can even just talk about the picks and bans and how, you know, you just wrote off enemy to enemy, having a good run in the matchup to Epsilon, fighting back, and then ultimately ending it in game number two. Welcome back to the Alienware Analyst Desk, folks, as we're gonna break this one down. Adonis, we'll start with you. What were your main takeaways from game number two? You know, we, we say it, Ching and Bologna all day, and if you get one of those, you're going to control the lane and, and control the game. But it was really, it was Dimmy. Dimmy had full control of this game. You saw at the end there, you know, 40,000 damage, had a single offensive item in Titan's Bane, and then a bunch of utility and defensive items. And, you know, he got ahead early, especially with that gank from adapting that we just saw in the Logitech First Blood. That just helped him gain more control lane. We even saw him solo out Salt Machine uh, later in that matchup. Speaking of uh, Demi, as a matter of fact, he is going to be the player of the game for game number two. And honestly, it is completely deserving. This guy, I mean, as Tyr, just pretty much went up there and it, it was like he just chopped him with a giant sword. And look at him, he is just grinning from ear to ear. He is so happy with that. Um, Ataraxia, to you, my friend. Uh, I mean, you know what? We thought, hey, Baylona, right? Like, too good, too strong. But Tyr showed up. Yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely love Dimmy. I've been uh, friends with him for a very long time now. We have a pretty great friendship, and he is just... I've always said on Epsilon there is Adapting and there is Dimmy. Adapting is the flashy one, he gets a lot of the attention, but Dimmy is always there, he is always the rock, and then occasionally when Adapting, you know, makes some mistakes, isn't playing on form, you see Dimmy shine through, and that's exactly what we saw there, even though he was against Bologna, and it's just, you know, and he's sick as well. Yeah, yeah. I'll, you know, big thanks to the crowd for giving him a cheer as well, because I think that's really going to lift his spirits, but Dimmy is just... He, he needs, you know, he, he deserves this recognition that he's getting right now. That all started, though, with that early gank. He needed the early gank. We were talking about how Tier was not going to win that lane, but because of the early rotation coming from adapting, help him get that. He got first blood, and then that really helped him thrive in that lane, and that's why you end up seeing 11 and 3, an incredible flash line. I mean, we're going to have to get that boy some NyQuil later on so uh, he could, you know, get better. But uh, I will say, uh, adapting, I, I, I do want to talk to him because he was the contributor in that uh, that that first blood, right? You know, Thor. I mean, like, I, and, and I, again, you know, at this point now, there's just too much for enemy to worry about, right? When it comes to picks and bans at this point. So it's like, there's just, there's too many things, but adapting Thor, despite certain, like, is situations where you're like questioning, oh, did he mean to do that? Like, in the matchup, still had presence, and that was what I was talking about in game one. Just the presence of adapting alone has caused a lot of problems. What do you think about this, Adonis? You know, Thor is just such a powerful pick, and sometimes it's really hard to ban out, especially with the high priority. And, and we were talking, I think this leads to what we were talking about earlier with how many strategies that Epsilon has, how deep all of their god pools are, and you can't just ban Thor with all these other top picks on, you know? Kepri has been banned out every single game. Soul has been a big portion of all these games as well. A and can you really spend a ban on Thor? Because adapting, he's playing phenomenally, but you know, it's, it's, it's There's risky. just too much for them There's to worry about. Yeah, I mean, as good as adapting is playing, I don't think this game came down to the Thor pick. This game came down to actually enemy throwing. Enemy did have themselves a lead, and they threw it at around the 27-minute mark. If you saw them go 
trying to get pickoff kills. They went towards the tier two. They dove, and because they dove, they put themselves out of positions. They got killed, which led to a fire drive for Epsilon, which is where the game turned around. I think they had a pretty solid game plan there, enemy, and they should, they should honestly, they could run it back as long as they execute it properly and have the discipline to not dive tier two. Yeah, I, I completely agree. To give enemy some love, they, that was their game. They were dominating. They were pushing Epsilon around. They were showing that they deserve to be here in the finals on the, on the grand stage, and I think they just need to not let this get in their head, similar to what we saw with Epsilon and C9 when Epsilon had the big lead and threw it. Um, this is the same situation, and honestly, it was working for them. So I really feel like they should just run it back. That, that draft was, it was in their favor. They were doing everything they wanted to, and it was just one small mistake to let Epsilon grab the lead and run away with it. So, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. You know, they did lose a game over it, but they could run that back, do the same thing, and just not mess it up. I, I